take a review of my E34, my car, so I'm going to be biased, but whatever, you're watching the video anyways, so let's take a look. All right, so the E34 is probably my favorite style BMW of this era, uh, except for the 8 series, which I might look at next week. Let's find out. Who knows? But yeah, let's take a look at this. This is a 530. It's a 94. 80,000 miles. Pretty reasonable shape. It's got E39 wheels. They're one inch bigger, so it doesn't look different whatsoever. Obviously, it's black. Yep, that's my plate. Don't look. Don't look. 530. See so yeah. It's a great looking body style. Obviously a lot of the panels are very flat, but this is kind of the style of the 90s for BMW. BMW had really square looking things, but it was really nice. Really big greenhouse, which is really the best part of this, and the build quality is uh, it's, it's exceptional to be honest. Things like this, small things, like my finger in the way, like both fingers. Everything has a mechanical sound to it. All the doors have this beautiful sound to it. The trunk. Everything's great. What's great back here is the leaves. <laughs> it's like, uh, no. There's actually a full-size spare back here. And you probably can't see. This is actually the original spare from 1994. So I'm never going to use it because it'll explode, so, but it's kind of cool to look at. And huge trunk, tremendous trunk. Little compartment right here, and battery's actually not in the trunk, and as in most BMWs, it's actually under the back seat from this car. So, it saves yourself a little bit of room. And yeah, standard BMW toolkit. Spin, spin, spin. Mm, toolkit, a little rusty. But it's in good shape. I could probably clean up in here, but it's not terrible. Alright, let's look at some more stuff. Like the interior. Back seat. Super beautiful. Wood trim. <laughs> for your cigarettes. Alright. Just pops open for your cigarettes. Open the door this way. This is silly, because we all use vapes now. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of space back here. My car is actually in relatively good condition, which is why it's going to be tough to sell it if I buy that 8 Series, but who knows? Um, headliner's really good, as you can tell. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really beautiful in here. There's a lot of room. We've got vents back here, which is nice. A little cubby on top for nothing. I don't know. I don't know what that's for, but it's nice. And if we move on to the front... Like I said, it's beautiful door panels. Kind of a two-tone, I don't know why. But yeah, this, these are both the darker color. It's lighter in here. It's just a whole bunch of tans. It's all kinds of brown. Like me. That's fine. And yeah, the wheel's really beautiful. Hey, let's go inside. We can take, oh, actually, one last thing. Let's look at the hood. Nice mechanical latch. And swings forward which is wonderful. It's actually reasonably easy to work on. I do pretty much all my own work, uh, minus the valve cover gaskets and stuff. It's, it's pretty easy to work on here. I couldn't get to my header. I don't know how you would do headers. I'm not gonna lie to you, but minus that. It's supposed to be a beauty cover over here, but my stride tower brace kind of blocks that. Your radiator. And yeah, these are honestly really simple cars. You can use OBD2 in here, so it's, can't really scan them. They have a pin, a 20 pin connector up here somewhere, which you can scan against. At this moment, I'm kind of forgetting where it is, but it's here somewhere. Ah, there it is. This little fella right here. If you pop this off, I'll just do it again. Nope, too hot. Can't do it. Uh, if you if you pop that off, there's a 20 pin uh, connector in there. You can plug that in, and there's an adapter that you can use an OBD2 scanner with, and that you can help read and clear codes. So there's still a way to do it in these cars, which is nice because um, a lot of cars prior to 96, you're just not going to be able to find it. And so yeah, the hood's here. Just put it down like this. These are the last generations of these front hinges. 
or just ugh. everything just has like a mechanical click to it so yeah let's go inside and we'll just take a look to see what we get in the driver's seat really nice carpets super nice wood the steering wheels it's great honestly uh, a lot of newer bmws have super thick steering wheel that you're just grasping at but this is like thin and it's like chill and i just locked my wheel so that's super chill as well <laughs> but yeah i mean it's just it's just really beautiful in here i have to say though that i bought the best condition e34 i've seen um there's probably better conditions ones out there but i haven't looked at them to buy like the dash is it's incredible up here like the material quality they used of this generation was incredible minus this not great it's pixelated but not a big deal it still works nope car's off i gotta work right now uh but yeah the vent controls uh you actually have dual zone in this which is awesome and heated seats where are you heated seat there we go heated seats both sides you get armrests up front this is really like driving a couch honestly it's like a super comfortable well you know excellent visibility and the steering on this generation it's incredible uh bmw's really lost their steering feel which kind of made them really big um say so yeah, everything clicks so honestly, these are really, in my opinion, the last generation. I haven't driven an 8 Series. I'm going to try one next week, hopefully. Um, but this is really the last generation of, like, really well-built, beautiful cars. People like the E38s, and, like, I get it, but I don't know. Something about this just looks right. The 5 is, like, the right size. I'm not going to be carrying three kids around. But, uh, yeah, let's take a drive, and let's see how she goes. All right, so let's take a quick drive through my neighborhood. Not a huge thing. But it's great. The best thing about these cars is just it's dead quiet in here. Like I have a 95 Mustang. And it's just super rattly and not that great, honestly. It's fun. Like it's fun for what it is, but rattly. In America. America. Neighborhood, and I don't know if you can or can't tell, but the uh, visibility is really good in this. Um, a lot of the reason I, I kind of prefer older cars. I really like good visibility. If it's a new car, good visibility, it's great. I mean, I just I really like good visibility. I think it's really important as like a safety aspect, and then just I guess I'm a little claustrophobic, and I really like the fact that I feel really good in here. Like it's just. It's just very chill, it's very relaxing. Um, and it gets a lot of light in here. It's like an open concept car. You know, that's a thing. But I made it up. Maybe you can hear the stalks and whatnot. Click. Click. I don't know if you had a 90s American car, but I used to have a 96 Camaro, and the stalks would sound like you're breaking a chicken's leg every time you did it. Crunch. And then, you know, chickens out. Yeah. yeah, it's super comfortable. This is a, a 530, so it's actually a 3 liter V8, which is a two year option. It was only 94.95. It's a 4 cam V8. It's a beautiful little thing. It's super tiny for a V8. 3 liters is really, really small V8. I've only known of maybe two smaller V8s in this. Um, an Alfa Romeo Montreal is a 2.6 liter V8, I believe. And then uh, a Fiat 8V is a 2 liter V8, which is really, like, super little. I couldn't imagine how small the pistons are. But they're, like, they're probably little, you know, little cupcakes fighting. Little V cupcakes. Something like this. I'm taking my hands off the wheel. But yeah, no, it's, it's a beautiful car. It doesn't have, like, a huge amount of torque. I think the 540 would have a lot more torque. The M5 wouldn't, because the M5 revs high, and it's, like, a race bright engine. But, um, yeah, the 540 would definitely have more torque. But these cars aren't heavy. Like, for a 5 Series, I don't know what a modern 5 Series starts out weight-wise, 
but I think it's close to 4,000 pounds. I know an M5 is almost 4,500 pounds with all-wheel drive. So that's really, really heavy. Like 4,500 pounds would get you a really heavy Suburban or Denali in 1995. And this is 3,400. So it's 1,000 pounds lighter. This is like what a, I think what a GT3 weighs now. <laughs> Or like a little bit heavier. But 3,400 pounds is like nothing considering you have four doors, five seats, huge trunk, full size spare, a guy yelling at you about his car. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it's incredible. And these, for, for what they cost, the autos especially, the manuals are starting to come up in for like a 540M Sport. The cheapest you're going to get one's like 15 grand spend probably 25 30 on a really really nice one but i bought this for 3500 bucks with 70 yeah 70 000 miles a few years ago i think it's, it's probably worth more now I, I made it a little bit nicer but uh yeah these some of these cars just for what it is considering a 500e mercedes is i think starting at thirty five thousand dollars for a really poor example of one uh, it's really, honestly, pretty amazing to think that you'd be spending, let's say, seven, eight thousand on one of these. It's a really nice car. If you want a classic that's like reasonably daily, like a, a like a daily driver. Like I drove this last weekend, not a hundred miles, maybe a little bit under a hundred miles. I live in like uh, Frederick, Maryland. And I drove down to DC and back. It's an hour each way. The car was great. 80 miles an hour, it's it's very chill. It's a five-speed automatic, um, which is pretty good tech for 1994. Um, it's excellent. Like, it's 2,000 RPM. Like, it's a really, really chill highway cruiser. Um, it's funny. I know a lot of people like the stick version of these. I drove one. Actually, right before I bought this one, uh, the car was oddly even cheaper out of the stick. But... It was weird. It was like driving a manual couch. I didn't really understand the appeal of it. I was like, if I'm gonna have a sedan, I wanna have a chill, comfortable sedan. I don't really need, like it's not hugely powerful. So I was like, well, it's not like a muscle car. It's not like I have an, like a manual Impala SS or CTS-V or something like that. It's like I'm driving a really comfortable manual car, which is a little funny to me. But as an auto, um, I know a lot of people don't like these autos. I had it flush and I used synthetic fluid. So honestly, like, let me see if I can get a good shift on this. It's not bad. It goes. It sounds great. I just have an intake on it. I'm debating to have put an exhaust on it. It would sound great. It's a 4 cam V8. There's no 4 cam V8. That sounds terrible. I think. Unless you, like, are missing cylinders or something like that. But, uh, no, I mean, it, it sounds it sounds great. And these are the last reliable cars that BMW made, which is really, in my opinion, it's the last reliable cars. Like, there's not a lot of BMWs that see that cross 200,000 miles. You routinely see pile mile E34s, six cylinders, V8s. They just, they're easy to fix. Parts are really cheap. You can find it pretty much everywhere. Um, and yeah, I think, honestly, these are just excellent cars. All right, so we're just pulling up on my house right now. Uh, thank you guys for joining me on this review. I hope you liked it. Uh, my next video will most likely be on reviewing my 95 Mustang before I get rid of it and probably buy something else or I'm going to search it. Uh, but yeah, thanks.